All right. Good morning, ConnectingDirectors.com readers. Uh, I've got Jeff Chancellor uh, on a call today to, to talk about Ebola um, and, and, and how funeral homes should prepare uh, to handle remains um, of those who have contracted the Ebola virus. Um, Jeff did an article for us last week. They got a lot of great traction on the site, so we thought it'd be um, beneficial to, to do a call with, with Jeff. So Jeff, why don't you uh, give us a little background on, on who you are and, and introduce yourself. Uh, well, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Jeff Chancellor, and I serve as Director of Education, Training, and Research uh, for Eccles. Eccles is a manufacturer of uh, embalming products, and uh, we also provide a lot of training worldwide on mortuary operations. Excellent. So, Jeff, to start out with, let's talk about uh, just preparation that funeral homes should take uh, for handling remains uh, of Ebola patients, even if they're not in a state that um, where anyone's contracted the virus yet, uh, what are some initial steps that we should all take to, to be prepared for this? Well, the first step that we should take is to do an inventory of our PPE and ensure that we have got chemical proof nitrile gloves, ensure we have impervious uh, coverall burial, barrier garments that have long sleeves, long legs, and, uh, and a hood over top of them, uh, ensure our masks are at least N95, uh, ensure that we have splash goggles as well as uh, full face splash shields. Um, it would also be an excellent idea for the uh, staff to utilize uh, barrier creams. For example, there's a lot of polymer-based creams you can rub onto your skin, and when they dry, they have uh, kind of an invisible protective layer that's embedded with antimicrobial agents. Now, uh, once people have inspected their PPE, uh, it's a really good idea to uh, practice putting it on and taking it off in a clean man, dirty man scenario so that there's no potential for any of the employees to come in contact with body fluids that are contaminated. Excellent. So uh, leading into this, probably one of the major things that we've heard about Ebola victims is, is cremation. So, I mean, can we embalm uh, a, an Ebola victim? That's a great question, Ryan, and I wish I had an answer. Um, it's going to depend on where you live. Um, during emerging, emerging disease uh, outbreaks, the local health authority has a lot of power. And so a local coroner or a local medical examiner can make decisions on uh, who will uh, handle the bodies and what the disposition will be. So some jurisdictions may permit it, some jurisdictions may not permit it. Okay, so all right, if, if, if we're prepared and then we, we have a case where we have to handle the remains of an Ebola uh, a victim, are the normal funeral home disinfectants that we have effective against the Ebola virus? Um, the, the proprietary formulas that are made for use in the mortuaries uh, will be effective, providing their main ingredients are on the list made by the EPA or the CDC. Um, there's a lot of interpretations of what a disinfectant is in a mortuary. And you know, disinfectants have best before dates. Disinfectants also have certain applications that uh, perhaps they were intended for that we may not be using in the mortuary. So it's a really good idea to review the disinfectants currently being used. In our product line, as an example, Sanifectant contains ingredients that destroy enveloped and non-enveloped viruses very rapidly. So uh, with our product line, yes, it's routine chemicals will be effective against the virus. Okay. So now we, we are handling the remains of an, an Ebola patient or victim. Um, how do we choose the barrier gloves, mask, gown? What are we looking for and, and how do we prepare with those items? Um, naturally, you want to be looking for impervious products. The uh, latex exam gloves and the, and the paramedic gloves are neither chemically nor biologically uh, impervious. So you want to go with a chemical rated nitrile glove with an extra long cuff. Um, masks, it's very important to choose a mask that gives you the maximum protection. N95 is the best standard. Uh, the spit trap masks that you buy at the drugstore are certainly not uh, effective in this regard. Uh, I think when it comes to the garments that you're choosing, uh, ensure that the coveralls are an impervious maximum protective barrier. They're going to be hot and they're going to be uncomfortable, but if you've been rehearsing dressing and undressing and rehearsing your movements, you won't be wearing them long enough to get really uncomfortable. Excellent. So how do we clean up the, a cot and, and vehicle after transportation and handling remains? 
Uh, anything that contacted the remains needs to be sprayed down with disinfectant uh, before it's going to be placed onto the cot. Uh, anything that the package, for example, the sealed remains has contact, it should be disinfected immediately upon removal uh, of the item. So spray the cot down with an approved disinfectant. There again, I avoid bleach and water in a 10 to 1 solution because it is corrosive. Um, use the products that are made that aren't going to be damaging to your products and aren't going to be damaging to your people. Okay, so uh, how, do we, how do we prepare a body for transportation? Um, I believe that there are many best practices out there. I would recommend that your cot or your transfer uh, stretcher be covered with a plastic sheet. Then you place a body bag on the cot. Inside the body bag would be an absorbent sheet that will absorb any remains, uh, any liquid that's generated from the remains. Now, the remains itself will likely be uh, wrapped in a sheet when you arrive to uh, uh, transfer it. Spray the sheet and the surrounding areas liberally with a approved disinfectant. Then transfer the remains onto the absorbent pad. Spray down your hands, anything that you had contacted the remains with. Uh, you may change gloves at this point in time, put on a fresh pair of gloves, and then seal the body bag. Disinfect the outside surface of the body bag, and then wrap the body bag in the plastic shroud. Uh, that would offer an excellent protection for yourself and the uh, uh, staff members who are surrounding the uh, the body bag during transit. Okay, so we, we, we've got the, the body back to the funeral home. We've done what we need to do to prepare the body for disposition. Uh, how do we disinfect the preparation room and, and get rid of all the waste um, after it's been in contact with an Ebola patient? Uh, there again, uh, topically spray with an approved disinfectant any areas that contacted the uh, uh, body pouch or any, uh, any materials that were in contact with the, uh, the remains or the pouch during transit need to be sprayed with a topical disinfectant and then wiped clean. What about um, removal of our, our body suits or what we're wearing for protection? How, you know, how do we go about derobing and, and getting rid of that waste? I think the best way to do that is um, using a clean man, dirty man technique. And so, for example, the clean person would be holding the disinfecting spray uh, and spraying everything that the dirty person contacted the remains with. So, for example, spraying down their hands, spraying down their forearms, spraying down the front of the uh, person who did the transfer. Then the clean person would take off the outer layer of PPE on the dirty person and carefully roll it up and, and place it in a biohazardous container. Then the person who's had one layer removed would take the disinfectant and spray down the person who was formerly clean, uh, any points of contact that they may have had, and undress their outer layer, ensuring that they're um, very careful to avoid splashing or dripping, and place that in the biohazardous container. Then they can uh, undress each other uh, down to a point where there's no longer PPE items involved. All the PPE would be placed in the biohazardous container, sprayed down, and then the container is sealed. And I would recommend spraying down and uh, disinfecting the outside of the biohazardous container, as well as the workspace in which this area, uh, the, in which the uh, undressing and uh, containment of the body had taken place. Excellent. So we've had a lot of discussion. You and I have had some some discussion offline as well about different states that have. Um, you know, different guidelines on how to handle Ebola. Is, is there a way, how do we take a step closer to having a unified um, guideline for the handling of Ebola remains? Is this possible? Um, it is um, possible, but really difficult. And there, it will be impossible for us to have a completely unified response because each location has its own facility limitations and its own human resource limitations. This is why it's important to take the best practices from organizations such as the CDC or the World Health Organization or the National Funeral Directors Association. Uh, all of these uh, organizations have some best practices that we can use as a foundation to create a very tailor-made or bespoke protocol for our people, our vehicles, and our facilities. Um, I, I think if we look at uh, a unified approach, we really have to look at each facility in order to ensure we can break any chains in infection and do the best job that we can to preserve our health. 
Excellent. So Jeff, we're going to be monitoring this video once we put it online. Uh, you are as well. So if users have questions, please leave them uh, uh, below the video. Jeff is going to be commenting. Um, and, and if there's enough, enough uh, uh, comments that are left and the need to, um, Jeff has agreed to do a follow-up article and or video where we can address those questions as well. But but Jeff, if there uh, is a user that wants to contact you directly and, and maybe get education for their staff or training um, or just have questions regarding uh, Ebola and, and just prep, prep room um, handling and, and disinfecting, how can they do that? Uh, they can certainly reach out to uh, myself and any of us at Eccles at our website, www.ecclesandcompany.com. Great. Jeff, I appreciate you taking the time this morning. Um, and, and this is the second go around of this video. So uh, I appreciate you uh, bearing with us and our technical difficulties this morning and, and, and doing this uh, for our readers. Uh, thank you kindly for the time spent, Ryan. All right. Take care, sir. Bye-bye.